Everyone remembers Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. But before his famous flight, there had been many more living space pioneers that didn't really have any choice about being strapped into an experimental rocket. The tidal wave of propaganda generated by Sputnik 1 had been unpredictable, but it had been especially positive for the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. He summoned Sergei Korelyov, the boss of the Soviet space program, and told him to make sure that a second satellite was launched in time to mark the anniversary of the October Revolution of November 7, 1917, giving Korelyov just over three weeks to complete the task. Despite the short notice, Korelyov didn't want to send up another bleeping sphere. He'd been developing his own ideas for some time and wanted to score another first by putting the first living creature, aside from microbes, into orbit. And on October the 12th, eight days after Sputnik 1, the decision was made to send a dog. Soviet scientist Boris Chiatok later told how, in the rush to design and build Sputnik 2, all the rules that had been carefully drawn up by the missile development team were abandoned in favour of a gambler's enthusiasm. He wrote, The second simple satellite was produced without any preliminary design or plan. The draftsmen and designers moved into the workshops. Almost all the parts were manufactured using sketches. Assembly wasn't so much according to the documents as according to on-the-spot fitting. The satellite designed by Korelyov's Council of Chief Designers contained a radio transmission system that looked very similar to Sputnik 1. Above it was placed an instrument to study cosmic radiation and below was the cabin that would hold the dog. That technology already existed because the Soviets had been sending up dogs and other animals into the atmosphere since 1951, although those experiments had only involved flights of one or two hours. The Sputnik cabin was modified and included an air supply, gelatin food and a water supply. There was also a light and a 100-line TV camera so scientists on the ground could watch the dog's progress. About 10 days before the flight, military physician Vladimir Yazovsky selected Laika to fly on Sputnik 2. The name Laika means Barker and was the female mongrel's second name after first being called Kudrayevka or Little Curly. Laika and the other dogs were strays picked up from the streets of Moscow and believed to be the best candidates because they'd learned to endure the extreme cold and hunger. Laika weighed six kilograms and had been selected because she appeared to be the best behaved amongst the 10 candidates. A dog called Albina was selected as a backup, whilst a third dog, Muka, was used to test equipment on the ground. Sputnik 2 lifted off on November 3rd, 1957, just after 5.30 p.m. Moscow time, and entered low Earth orbit 297 seconds later. It took just over 103 minutes to circle the planet, with the nearest distance of 211 kilometers, 131 miles, and the farthest distance of 1,659 kilometers, or 1,031 miles. Sputnik 2 had no way to return to Earth, so it was only ever going to be a one-way trip for Laika. The batteries providing life support were thought to be good for just six days, meaning that Laika would die long before the end of the flight. It was later revealed that she died much earlier, probably due to overheating of her cabin. During the first three orbits, her vital signs appeared normal, although she had been agitated during the launch procedure. By the fourth orbit, less than seven hours into the mission, the temperature had risen to 43 degrees Celsius or 109 Fahrenheit, and by November the 4th, the only life sign was a heartbeat. By the third day of the mission, no life signs were reported. Boris Chiatok later admitted that everyone knew the flight was a death sentence for Laika. He said that it was virtually impossible to create a reliable life support and thermal control system within such a short period of time. It was a complete triumph. None of us doubted that the Americans had been put to shame. Only the British Royal Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals protested Laika's martyrdom. Some scientists had planned on euthanizing Laika by poisoning her food so she wouldn't die in panic from the overheating, but it seems that this was not done. In 1998, Alec Gazenka, the scientist that selected and trained Laika, expressed his regret for her death and said the following, Work with animals is a source of suffering to all of us. We treat them like babies who cannot speak. The more time that passes, the more I am sorry about it. 
we shouldn't have done it. We didn't learn enough from a mission to justify the death of a dog. Sputnik 2's orbit decayed on April 14, 1958 after completing 2,570 orbits of Earth, with the debris, including Laika's remains, impacting the Amazon region in South America. By that time, Sputnik 1 was long gone and the USA had placed their first satellite, Explorer 1, into orbit, with a flight that was to last 12 years. Laika wasn't the first animal in space, but she was the first animal to orbit Earth. On February 20th, 1947, the USA had sent up fruit flies aboard a captured German V-2 rocket in an early experiment into how radiation affects living beings. Two monkeys called Albert had been launched later. Albert 1 died during the V-2 flight of June 11th, 1948, and Albert 2 died on impact when his V-2 returned back to Earth on June 25th, 1949. Then on December 12th, Albert IV suffered no ill effects during the flight, but died on impact after the parachute failed. It wasn't until September 20th, 1951, that a monkey called Yorick and 11 mice came back alive from an American missile flight. On July 22nd, 1951, the USSR launched two dogs, Zigan and Dizik, into space. And although they weren't the first animals to enter orbit, they were the first animals to be safely landed after the flight. On May 28, 1959, two monkeys, Miss Abel, a rhesus monkey, and Miss Baker, a squirrel monkey, became the first two animals to be launched 300 miles or 480 kilometers into space by a Jupiter rocket and to be recovered alive by the United States. Although they survived acceleration forces of 38 G and 16 minutes in space, Miss Abel died four days after from an adverse reaction to an anesthetic during an operation to remove electrodes used in the flight. Miss Baker went on to become quite famous at the US Space and Rocket Center, entertaining visitors to the museum and receiving hundreds of letters a day from school children. Miss Baker lived until November 29, 1984, becoming the oldest living squirrel monkey at the age of 27. After Laika, the USSR sent up two more dogs, Belka and Strelka, on August 19, 1960, along with a grey rabbit, 42 mice, two rats, 15 flasks of fruit flies and some plants. This was the first mission to place animals into orbit and bring them back alive. On January 31, 1961, a trained chimpanzee called Ham operated levers on a Project Mercury mission, becoming the first animal to interact with flight controls. Having proved that it was possible to operate a machine in space without the dangerous delays caused by the environment, Ham paved the way for Alan Shepard to become the first American in space aboard Freedom 7 on May 5, 1961. Enos the Chimp became the third hominid after Yuri Gagarin and Guriman Titov to orbit the Earth in November 1961 in what was to become a full dress rehearsal for John Glenn's first orbital mission in February 1962. In the same way the Soviet animal experiments had enabled Yuri Gagarin to become the first human in space, Gagarin himself jokingly referred to it by saying, I don't know whether I'm the first man in space or the last dog in space. Later, on September 14th, 1968, two tortoises, some worms and flies became the first living creatures to orbit the moon and return safely back to Earth aboard the Soviet Zond 5. Since then, the kinds of animals sent into space has increased, as has the number of nations sending them there. The list includes frogs, rabbits, guinea pigs, fish, geckos, spiders, and dozens of other types of insects. In September 2007, a group of tardigrades, also known as water bears, eight-legged micro-animals known to be capable of going into a form of suspended animation, were sent into space on the outside of a Photon M3 rocket for 10 days. Upon arrival back on Earth, 68% of them had survived the cold, irradiated vacuum of outer space. The moral question of whether we should continue sending animals into space or whether we should have ever done it in the first place remains a hot topic. Some argue that, even in the early days of space travel, the only living things that should have been sent up there were people who had made the conscious decision to go and knew the risks. 
Others point out that whilst it may have been necessary to do it in the past, modern animal flights are nothing more than sideshows. Another point of view is that, as we look forward to long-term plans to sending humans to Mars and beyond, we may once again have to rely upon animals to take the risk for us. In 2013, the UK's Guardian newspaper ran a poll asking the question, should we send animals into space? 21% of the responders said yes, while 79% said no. The topic has received renewed interest when, in 2015, University of Miami philosopher Mark Rowlands published a book in which he'd gathered recent evidence to claim that animals were capable of understanding right from wrong, and therefore could be as moral, or even more moral, than us. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget we also have the Curious Droid Facebook page and group, the link is in the channel page, and you can also translate any of the videos with the community contributions. I'd also like to thank all of our patrons for their ongoing support, and if you would like to support us, then please click on the Patreon link now showing. So as always, thanks again for watching, and please subscribe, rate, and share.